Well, I just need to say today, because, you know, I'm always on the uh, omnipresent Facebook, and so uh, if you look around and someone you normally sit next to isn't here today, I happen to know they're at Gay Days in Orlando. Now, if you live in or near Wilton Manors, why you would schlep all the way to Orlando to get your gay on, I don't understand. <laughs> but maybe I'm just getting older, I don't know. But here I am, here where we live, wearing leather and lace. You can see the leather. And, um, <laughs> Go to Orlando if you want to. And, um, <laughs> but we've got a very special share today. Uh, throughout the month, we're inviting people from the community to share with us what they do, the very important work they do. And uh, today, our guest is actually from our partner organization, SunServe. It's the uh, director of transgender services at SunServe. Would you please welcome Atticus Rank? Atticus, uh, as I said, is the Director of Transgender Services at SunServe, Sunshine Social Services. Uh, he has a master's degree in gender studies. He's, a, he's an expert in everything I'm going to ask him and a lot more. So uh, uh, he's a, he, was, he wowed and fascinated and charmed the 9 o'clock service, and it's about to happen with you too. The first thing I want to ask you, of course, there's a lot of mishigash going on uh, around bathrooms, a lot of laws and and uh, a, a lot of rhetoric and proposed laws, so far in 22 states, and I think more are working on it. What is all of this craziness about who can use what bathroom? First, thank you for inviting me. Uh, and let me just share that uh, it's like all these states are preparing for trans people to start using restrooms, when trans people have been using restrooms for decades. Forever, OK. Right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's just uh, the transgender community is the, the latest scapegoat, you know, for it used to be uh, that gay men were pedophiles and now it's that trans people are. Um, and of course you can be both trans and gay. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so what we're seeing is that uh, people are suddenly scared of trans people using restrooms. Uh, but it's not even necessarily trans people that, that are being targeted, it's people that don't conform to the gender binary, mm -hmm. right? People who like masculine women are being targeted in restrooms if they, uh, if they don't look like women or um, men who may be a little more effeminate. And as a transgender man who looks like a man, I can use the male restroom and I feel safe because I look like a man, right? But it's people that don't necessarily look male or female that are the, that are the most vulnerable. And uh, what we need to do is protect the most vulnerable person, which is always the transgender person. Um, I don't know of any trans people that have instigated violence uh, in a restroom. Uh, most of the time, the trans person wants to be as quiet as possible, mm -hmm. do their business, hopefully wash their hands, and then leave. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> So the, uh, it's just that we need to protect the transgender person who's the most vulnerable. And you're, you're uh, not that long out of graduate school. I mean, if there were, if it were a, st a statistically significant problem of, of trans people instigating violence, you'd probably have heard about it, you know. Right, you, right. And you I, know. I, I have not heard of anybody that would instigate it, a trans person that has. In yeah. fact, more U.S. senators have been arrested for misconduct in restrooms <laughs> than trans people. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, there, now, there's transgender is, and I know we don't have a lot of time, but you, you said something about people who don't conform to gender norms, and immediately I thought of my grandmother, who was a, a country woman from the hills of Arkansas. You, you, she could she could uh, sandpaper furniture with her pans. I mean, she was just a rough kind of you know woman. And uh, but no one ever questioned. You know, she just you know that she was yeah. just. But today she might she might be picked on. You know, because she doesn't conform to some image of of femininity or whatever. So the, what is, can you just briefly tell us when we talk about gender nonconforming and gender queer and transgender, these aren't, uh, these aren't synonyms, right? These are, these are uh, 
distinct realities. Right. So the transgender community, transgender is the umbrella term for the whole kind of gender non-conforming population. Um, so there are transgender people like myself who are born, I was born female, but I identify as male. And I, I identify in the male binary spectrum, right? But we recognize that gender lies along a continuum. So there are transgender people who feel that they are in the middle, that they're maybe non-binary or gender non-conforming or gender fluid. We even use the word gender creative. Uh, so transgender is that whole umbrella term. But there are transgender people who feel male and feel female, but then there are also transgender people who don't feel either or feel both, uh, and that's okay too. Excellent. Um, so you're the director of the transgender services at SunServe. What are some of the services you offer? So I kind of see my position as threefold, which is support, education, and advocacy. So in the supportive role, we have five different support groups just for uh, transgender people or someone who loves someone who's transgender. Because we find that when someone transitions, the whole family has to go through a transition with pronouns and name and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and how to advocate for, maybe it's a child uh, that's transitioning and maybe they want to advocate for them in the schools or in their church. Um, so we actually have our SOFA group, which is significant others, friends, family, and allies of transgender loved ones, and that meets twice a month, the second and fourth Saturdays. Uh, and that's mostly parents of adult transgenders or adult teenagers uh, or teenage uh, transgender people. Um, and significant others. And then we also have our different drummer family group, which is actually for trans kids ages three to 11, because we're finding that the narrative of many transgender people is that they know from a very young age uh, that they're transgender. Uh, and that for the first time, I think we're really starting to listen to that. Uh, so trans kids are socially transitioning at younger ages. So we offer that support group for people uh, so that kids can be themselves and they play with the other trans kids while we have the support group for the parents. Um, so that's part of the support. And then the education. So I do a lot of trainings around transgender issues. Um, whether it's in a recovery center, in a rehab, I've gone into the jail system and tried to help inmates who are transgender, um, different hospitals, medical school students. So I do a lot of training for people who work with the transgender population and need to know how to be more affirming. Uh, and how to be competent for the transgender community. And then the other thing I do is advocacy, and that comes in the form of resources for the community, whether you need hormones, or you need mental health counseling, or you need your name and gender marker changed, you know, whatever it is, I can either try to help you directly or I refer you to someone who can help you, and that's some of what I do at SunServe. Uh, Atticus actually did a training with the executive staff of the Sunshine Cathedral so that we would uh, uh, know more and, and, and be a better resource for the broader community. Um, so someone, uh, and this happens, I mean, uh, people will sometimes uh, let me know that they are somewhere on the spectrum, uh, the transgender, and I, I didn't know until they tell, uh, told me. Uh, if someone is out there and they want the sort of support you offer, they want some of the services that you offer, how do they get plugged in to your program? First, I do have business cards, so if you want one at the end of the service, I can uh, give you that. Or I know that Darrell and a lot of people here know how to contact me, uh, so that would be fine. And sometimes when people do contact me, I'm, I may be the first person that they tell that they're transgender. Uh, and that's a really humbling experience, of course. Um, but if they are, while SunServe is a LGBT nonprofit, we never turn anyone away. And our mental health services work on a sliding scale fee if you don't have health insurance. Uh, and all of my services are currently free. Um, so you should come see me before my boss makes me pay, makes, <laughs> makes you pay for something. <laughs> so, um, so that's what we do. Um, so if you are questioning, or if you're not sure, uh, or if you've never told anyone, everything is confidential at SunServe. So we're here to help you. So I, I, I think I'm transgender. You help me work through it. Turns out I'm not. Uh, I, there's some other thing going on. Uh, maybe I just don't fit neatly into a binary, which I guess would put me on the transgender scale. Uh, but, but there's no shame in that. Like, whatever I come knowing, you're not going to say you wasted my time. Like, it's, right. good, it's time well spent. Yeah, that's, uh, that was some of the, the controversy when we started the, the different drummer group for the trans kids. Was, that, oh, we're going to pressure you to, to, to transition or to be who you are or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. We simply allow you the space to figure it out yourself. You know, we're going to give you the, kind of the options and the, the, the space to say, I am this way or I'm not this way. And sometimes figuring out what you're not is just as important as figuring out who you are. Exactly. Right? So, so we just allow you the space to figure that out. Nice. 
SunServe does amazing work in our community. We're so proud that they are partners, and uh, I'm uh, so impressed with the heroic work that Atticus does. Would you please thank him for being with us today? Thank you.